Hello and welcome. This is Ruth and today I've got the Twirling Teacups die set from Tonic to share with you and this is one of their March Madness 2024 launches and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you'll be able to see lots and lots of photos at the end of this but if you watch right through I'm going to show you how to make the actual well what I would call maybe a carousel and the beautiful little cups and it's so so pretty but I think there's lots of other ways that you could use these dies as well. There are 34 dies in the set and just before I forget, the largest die is 38 millimeters by 214, which is 1.5 inches by 8.4 inches. So I'm reckoning that should be able to fit through um, a smaller die cutting machine. This one is quite long, so this would be the longest one, I think, and that's 8.4 inches long. But I reckon that would you could manage to get that through your plate. The rest are not very wide. So the finished size of the uh, full construction is 238 by 238 by 238 millimetres and that corresponds then to 9.4 inches um, in all of the dimensions as well. So if you haven't already subscribed, I would love you to do that and you'll be able to see lots and lots of these. You'll not miss any of them if you hit the notification bell and it would really, really help me along if you enjoy it at the end, if you give it a big thumbs up and leave me a little comment to let me know what you think about it. But I don't want to talk too much about the dies, I just want to get into it. I looked at this set and I thought, oh, isn't that so gorgeous? This little die here actually makes up the uh, little cup itself. And I absolutely love teacups, little fancy teacups. I use them all the time because I just think having something uh, special, just using it on a daily basis, just makes you feel really good. It does to me anyway. So I got that and six of these make the little cup and then I picked out some beautiful card and I just couldn't wait to get started and I made myself the little cup. So you'll see it takes six of those. So remember to try to work these out on your, uh, you know, your card or whatever for your plate through your die cutting machine to cut as many of them as possible. But don't put them so close that they're going to overlap. Tape them down really, really well. And just remember the more dies you put on, the harder it is to turn the handle on whatever machine you're using. So think carefully, take your time. This isn't a sort of a rushed half hour project. This does take a lot of time because uh, some of these dies, particularly, I think it's this one here and this one, you're going to need 24. Yeah, that one and that one. You're going to need 24 each of those and then six sixes, 36 of this one. So one each of these for each cup as well. Think carefully about that and just place them as you're going through. Pick out some beautiful coloured card and just enjoy yourself because at every stage of this you're just going to see something that just makes you go, oh, isn't that gorgeous? Look, anyway, there's a bit of the roof because I picked out the gorgeous uh, glitter card there that is uh, candy floss and I cut that out with these two dies. And I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. Now this is an older paper pad from Trimcraft. It's called It's a Girl. I've had a lot of pieces of this because I don't like to waste any pieces. And um, I had quite a few of them in my stash. So it takes very, very little to make this up. You don't even need a big piece. And uh, I had enough to do the, the cups. So I've added some of it onto this here as well. I've made some of the little trims with it. But uh, it'll tell you on your instructions just how many pieces of each that you need to cut out. So take your time, do it carefully, and we're going to go right through this. And you might get a couple of little ideas at the end for something different as well. Don't forget to hold on to the end because as I said before, there, there will be lots and lots of photographs. So there's actually two different types of cup. This one has the little handle on it and the other one has these little hooks. And you, you attach this one with uh, the hooks to the side of the cup without the handle attached and then you attach the cup to the top of the little what I would call a carousel by little ribbons so uh, in right now I'm just going to make the one with these little handles on because I just I just couldn't wait to get started on that one it's really really beautiful and I might just make something else with that at the end to match in with this one so let's just get started you're going to need uh, 24 as I said of these dies and then you can go ahead and glue these six of them together each time and that will make a big panel like this and you're going to need four of those 
all you need to do is put glue on these little glue tabs here. Pop that down and just take your time with this as I mentioned before because you really want to get this, you just want to be so proud of this at the end and make sure that everything is really really carefully lined up before you move on to the next part. That's really really important to get a very very professional finished look to this. You're going to love it. I love it already so I think you're just going to be so excited to, to make this and just to see the finished project. Now you're going to take this die and you'll cut that out six times at the moment and I have burnished it these little score lines back but before you burnish it just take something round or even a bone folder and curve these little areas here and then I've gone ahead with the little die inside there and cut it out and put it in the centre so uh, that is really really beautiful in the glitter card but just make sure you burnish everything really really well that is very very important to get a good crisp finish at the end and then what you want to do is glue the bottom tabs in below here and do that the whole way around. So to get that lined up properly, just make sure you have this one burnished well, put that into the sort of uh, dip area there. Can't, can't think of the right word I'm looking for. Uh, and then once the glue has grabbed in that, just uh, follow right round to the edge there. And then you can attach the rest the whole way around in the same way. But do not rush this at all. When there's curves involved, just take your time uh, this isn't going to look good if you rush it and let all those bits pop out again. Just take your time. As you can see I've got all of those on and I need to add pieces on here. So these are the little stabilizing die cuts and you can see that that's actually got little marks in it that you can cut that into three. So you should have eight of those. Leave two of them aside for the moment because those ones are going to get cut like that and for the other six then you're going to glue these along here. So with the flat side of your die cut facing inwards and the glue tab facing sort of parallel to the edge here, actually right out at the edge. You can glue those on the whole way around. should end up with this little shape and these little stabilizing pieces make it so easy this time just to go ahead and lay this on top just making sure you have the sides parallel like that and if you remember in some of the other little boxes that we made it was difficult to hold these pieces in below until you got this all glued on but now we've got this little area here on on this particular one and that holds it all really neatly in place so all you've got to do is put some glue on these glue tabs uh, the whole way around there and set this on and glue those glue tabs over just being really careful that you hold it right into all of these little uh, scallop parts here the whole way around
a little tip with the glue here as you can see I actually had put glue on these little tabs but I went in very very quickly and rubbed it off again and left it because although it holds it up really really well it actually is a lot easier if you can s still put your hand in below here and hold these pieces in place and then it will rest itself down on those little tabs after that and whenever you have that in place then you can glue on here and just slide that back in but it does make a lot more sense and it makes it a lot easier if you glue this piece in place first pop your hand or a little bone fold or something in just to make sure all those pieces have grabbed and then you can just lift this piece out put sort of slide it back out like that fold it over put the glue on set it in and it just makes it so much easier so that's just a little quick tip for you can see in this example that I'm making here that I have decided to do it just a little bit differently. I actually prefer gluing all of this together with wet adhesive but I just want to show you that it will make it easier for you if you want to just try this with the little snail or what I would call it and you can put uh, adhesive around the top here. You could even put double sided tape on there just whatever and even if you lay this down flat and do it first of all but I keep the two of these together and I'm making, joining the two at the same time. So I'm actually putting glue in here. I find this works really well. So if you put glue in there, right along there, and you do the underside, don't worry too much about whether the top sticks very, very well at the moment because uh, you will actually be adding some more glue over the top of it whenever you come to cover this. So there's what we're going to do. Put the glue on in, in below. We'll not worry about that top part just yet. And I can put, still put my hand in here. I can pop that little piece, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but I can pop that little piece right in there and then fold this all over and have that glued together. Once that's all in place and that glue's dried, I could obviously use double sided tape on that as well, but I do really like the glue so well that I'm just sticking to the glue, <laughs> sticking to the glue on the bottom side of it. But then when it comes to the top part, I just flip these over and we've got that adhesive on there and I can just put that in there just like so. Whenever all of that's glued together, and that really only takes a few minutes because that glue is actually quite fast grabbing. If any little bits have popped up, just uh, pop them back down again. But at this stage then, you'll see all of those exposed glue tabs the whole way around there and on the other side as well. So you can come back in with two more of these and line them up there and just glue one on top. Put plenty of glue on that to hold it, turn it over and do exactly the same on the other side. That stabilises the structure, strengthens it and covers up all the glue tabs all in one go. is really really sturdy now and it's got lots and lots of card on it and it's a very very firm base so I'm going to set that aside for a moment or two and make the column so I have cut out six of these and that there they are with the little glue tabs all burnished really really well with my little bone folder and then I've taken this die along with this one and I've used that on the pink glitter card and I have glued that shape on in the center of these panels here so now I'm going to attach all of these together by the glue tabs and make a little column.
you can take six of these die cuts and glue those together in the same way as we glued the sort of scalloped ones together the whole way around and then they will slide down over the top of that and you can glue them onto these tabs. Now there's a die there to add some decorative detail onto that but I haven't just done it yet because I want to see what it looks like first but if you know what you want to add on feel free to go ahead and add that on now. Because I'm going to add the sort of twirling teacups in with the little brads. I've actually just been out and bought brads in between times there because I didn't have enough. So you will need to cut out six of these for each cup and then the little panels to go with it. You will also need two of the little hexagons like this and then you will need two of these so it's one each of these shapes and you glue those together like this and I actually just glue those little tabs together too. Anyhow I'll come back to that in a moment. Then you will need to use the little decorative panels here. So you can see here we've also got a couple of ones here that you could use if you wanted to do the pattern part or if you want to add a piece onto the bottom but I have added some decorative paper on here and I actually just like the, the bottom of that plane so I'm going to leave it like that and six for each of these so you will need 36 then of this and then all the corresponding pieces so just take your time and cut them out carefully now you'll start off with this little piece here and as you can see i've already gone ahead burnished all the little score lines i've got my pieces glued on here and i simply just put glue on this little tab here and put that in below this little hexagon edge so you can see there it's going to line up perfectly and just take your time in fact while I've been making these I have left one aside to make sure the glue has grabbed properly and then moved on to the next one because uh, obviously with six on the go you can do that it doesn't uh, really take any extra time you can just move on from one to the other but just be very careful that you have them lined up carefully across that line there because that means there's no gaps whenever you come to glue them all up together at the end. Now I've actually made the first one by gluing the side panels together and popping the little hexagon down in at the end but I just find this was easier so we'll go ahead with this one. Once that glue has grabbed you'll need to make sure that all these little edges are folded up in so just do that, bring this one up, fold them in and then you can go ahead and glue one at a time. The way I do it is just glue one of these, I'll actually use the, the broader nib, one of those and the, this little piece together and then I line the top up first just to make sure that that's completely level. Hold that top part in place. It's really really easy and then you can see that you've got this little join in the right place and just press your finger in behind and on top and hold that together and you'll work your way around but don't forget if you want to add the handle on you can do it in two ways you can actually make your handle like this and leave these two pieces open and glue that on at the end and I'm sure that's really nice that would just go on there but I don't really like those little pieces showing so what I've done is just glue those together it's probably not the right way to do it but it's the way I've done it because I just thought that it looked neater at the end. And then you pop glue on here. Now don't forget this is double thickness so it's quite heavy because I have used 300 GSM card. Pop one on here. But make sure first of all that you have bent these back so that they are flexible. And then pop one on there. And you'll be able to just make sure from this side that it lines up directly with the top of your cup. Oh sorry, I <laughs> can't even see that. So there we are. Just hold that in place until that glue grabs and then pop the other one on down here. Whenever the glue's grabbed on that then you can put glue on the top side of each of those little pieces and just follow the same direction as we have done to gluing the sides together except that you're going to have that little piece in the middle. It will take a second or two longer to dry at the end because you're going to just hold it and be sure that it's 
in exactly the right place as you go along because you have three things to watch now. You're going to watch the top here, you're going to watch that this is in the right place and this. It sounds complicated, it's extremely easy. Just hold those together whenever the glue's dried but not before it, then you can move this back and forwards and carry on to the next bit. You might prefer just to open those little pieces out and glue it to the side but I think this is neater. Isn't that so pretty? I absolutely love little teacups so that really floats my boat. Now you can turn that over and that's where you'll add this little extra hexagon on and that covers up all those little glue tabs and strengthens the bottom of it as well. Be careful just to line the little hole up as well. That little hole is actually where you're going to put the little brad through and um, so once you get that attached there you can pop a brad through here I probably would have preferred little cream brads but um, the shop I went to this morning didn't have them and I was in a hurry but gold's okay it's all right you don't see them too much and I've gone ahead with the rest of them because I just couldn't wait <laughs> and I have attached them in so what you're going to do is put the, the brad through the cup and then the corresponding hole in this piece that we have just attached around the column and I'll just zoom you out a little bit and there you are, you can turn it over and open the little pins up like that. I'm going to make another base up like this. So I have taken six of these edges again and glued them together. And then I've got this little piece here which is actually made with this guy and then this one which I cut out from glitter card. I have curled them a little bit with a pen again and as I said before you could actually use a bone folder but sometimes you get a little crease or a little straight edge in it that you may not want so uh, I find that just works best. Now then you can fold all of these over burnish them really really well with your little bone folder as well and then remember just to keep them all heading the right way up it's very easy to forget and have one of these little pieces going up and one going down in the next one so align them all and attach them round here. So we're going to do that in exactly the same way as I did before and that just follows in like this. Now I think it says in the instructions that you would glue all of these together in one big long strip and then glue them on here. I actually find it's easier just to do them one at a time and then glue this little piece together and attach them the whole way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and cover the bottom of it. Now I'm going to take the other two stabilising pieces and this is where you'll cut them in, into thirds. So just straight up that line there and there and obviously then that's given us six because I'm going to do the same thing with the other one there. Fold these pieces back and we'll do exactly the same thing as I did on the other part. So that will go in there. This will fold in and we'll just do the same thing right around the centre. I've added all of those little pieces in and as you can see there I've flattened them down just a little so that I can get in here with my finger and pop all these pieces down. So I've put glue on the underside of these and now I'm just going to attach them. One sort of segment at a time I think is definitely going to work best. Now this does take a little second or two to attach. Don't rush it because if you do those will pop off and it's much much easier just to do it as you go along. When you get to that stage again then you can put glue on here, pop that inside there, a little peg will hold it there and you can just carry on the whole way around here. Take your time, please don't rush this because it definitely needs a little bit of persuasion. So look, looking at this I'm thinking it's possible that you could actually just attach one at a time. You could glue this on 
here and then onto the centre. Attach one to here and one onto there and then glue them as you go along. That's another way of doing it and you might prefer that so give that a try as well. When all of that is in place then it says in the instructions to make a fourth one of these up. Glue it together in this sort of flower shape and glue it on top of that. But I think this time I'm going to just try it slightly differently. I'm going to glue each one of these pieces on separately because um, I've just noticed that if there's any discrepancy at all or you can't get the whole thing on and lined up properly, I think this would be easier. So you can just make sure that each edge there is sitting properly and really well attached. So you just need to make sure that this piece goes on here. On the first one, you'll leave a little gap there where you can fit the next one in underneath, you know, this little glue tab. But from here on in, just take your time and again, just glue each one down and cover each of those up the whole way around and you'll find that I think that this might work out easier. Well that worked fine, that came out really well. So now all I've got to do is glue this piece which has the column and the cups and everything on it and glue that directly on top of here lining up the little scallops as I go. And it just looks now like I didn't actually need to put these pieces on at all here because I've got another little decorative panel that goes on there and sits up a little bit so I have cut that out like so and got lovely patterned paper on it and I think once I get this all glued together that actually goes on there. But anyhow, at, for the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and glue all of this and attach it to this. It's time to attach both of these pieces together so I'm going to glue this panel onto here and we'll just line up these little scallop edges with this and centre that. You can actually have a little look in underneath there and you'll see, hopefully you'll see it, uh, you can actually line that up with those little holes in there and that way you'll know that it's actually all in place properly and it should be then symmetrical but just be sure that the little scallops line up here. Then I have some little decorative pieces here that I'm going to put on these pieces and I cut those out of the glitter card. I didn't want to add them on until the end so once I get this glued on I'm going to put those on as well. I've had a little look at this and it does seem a shame after I cut all those little pieces to cover them up and I could actually leave it like that. It looks a little bit like a tiered cake I think but I really really love these pieces so I'm just going to go ahead and glue them on here the whole way around over the top of that glitter. Yes I know <laughs> but anyway it's going to look lovely at the end. This, this sort of brings all of that together. It brings the little teacup part together because I've used the same pattern of paper on this and I really really love that. Oh yes, I'm glad I did that. I think that ties in really, really well and looks beautiful now. So we've got to take these two hexagon die cuts and I'm going to cut the glue tab, the long glue tab here, right off one of them and then join the two of them together just like that. Right, I've turned all these little glue tabs backwards and I'm going to put glue on each one of them and pop that down inside the top of the column there. So just in there and this stabilizes the column and holds it in its proper shape. Got some glue on my fingers now but you'll get the idea. That goes down in there just like that. Just press the sides in like that. 
Now I've taken this die and I've cut that out six times, as you can see here, and I've already gone ahead and decorated them. So this panel was actually cut using this die and this die together with the glitter card, and I glued that on each one. I've burnished all the fold lines the whole way around, and then I took this little die, and there is actually another one there to make it more intricate, but I wanted to cut that out in the patterned paper, and I've glued that on the whole way around. And now I'm going to attach the six of these together to make a lovely roof. This just gets prettier and prettier by the moment because now that I've got the roof made, isn't that just so gorgeous? Isn't it really beautiful? So now I'm going to put glue on these tabs and then I, you can't really see that from there. But when I put glue on there, uh, I can turn it over this way, that will fit directly on here. This has got to the stage where it's very, very difficult to show it in all its glory, but I will maybe just move this up a bit. And there you are. Now, you see these pieces that I added on down here? I had actually 12 of those cut and I've just joined the other six of them together like this. And that has formed a kind of a collar. And now this is going to get slipped down over here and I'll just show you where I'm going to glue it just directly above this little patterned piece here on the top of here and that piece sits up then and forms another little decorative panel on the top of that. So I'm going to add some glue just around here, the whole way around and slide that on and then hold it in place until it grabs. I also noticed on the way around that one of my teacups had got a bit excited and it only has three pieces of decorative paper on it so I'm going to finish that too in a second. Whenever I had cut out the sort of roof or lid or whatever you call this part for the bigger uh, piece I just thought when I put four of them together it would make a lovely little lid and then I could make an, a nice little box so now I've gone ahead obviously I had to make the lid first and then you can sort of work out what the box size needs to be for that because the lid needs to fit on top so this is 10 centimeters across the way and I obviously then want each side of the box to be 9.8 centimeters so I have cut two pieces which measure uh, 10 centimetres deep and they're actually just the full length of an A4 piece of card and I have scored them at 9.8 and 19.6 uh, and then I actually did take this little piece off at the end of both of them there just uh, to make that a little bit shorter and I've scored them in at one centimetre from here so it's, uh, we've, I'm left then with a centimetre across here, down here and across here and I've burnished all of those score lines and as you can see there I've taken a little chamfer champ <laughs> I have taken a little chamfers off that as well so I'm just going to do that here to just there and there and this will help with gluing it together at the end because you don't want all that extra bulk I'm going to take off that and then in there so 9.8 by 10, 9.8 by 10, and then you've got your one centimeter little bit the whole way around. And that will make a lovely little box if all of that was just glued together and then we had a little base in it. But I reckon that I would like to have a little piece of um, acetate in the center of it so that you could see the little teacup inside. And I did go ahead and make myself a, another little teacup. So I'm going to cut out a little aperture in this piece here. 
and I want that aperture to be two centimeters down from the top and one in from each side here and one from the bottom. I've got a piece of, of acetate which is nine centimeters by seven and a half and I'm just going to glue this on around that aperture. Now I know some people prefer to use high tech tape or whatever but I actually prefer glue for most things as you'll have seen. Um, just let it sit there for a minute or two and that will grab and it all will be good. Now we can go ahead then and assemble the little box. So glue down here. Pop that onto there. And then bring this piece around and glue this on here. And then we'll cut a little piece for the bottom after that. Got a piece of card which is 9.8 centimeters square and I'm just going to glue that onto the base of this and it's 300 GSM again so it's very very sturdy. And that's that acetate that I've used is also uh, construction made acetate which means that it's really sturdy too although I'm sure you could possibly use something a wee bit lighter in the front but I do prefer the heavier weight stuff. I made a little prototype saucer so I'm just going to show you how we can do that in the ivory to go along with this and I have a little scalloped circle die set so it doesn't have to be scalloped it could be just playing around the edge as well but this uh, this circle is 9.5 centimeters in diameter and then I've taken a little four centimeter diameter circle from the center of that now I'm actually going to snip in from the outside just to give it a little curve so that it sits up a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to overlap that probably about, I would say about a centimetre or slightly more, just enough to give that a little bit of a shape. And we'll just put some glue on either, either one, it doesn't really matter, either one or the other, top or bottom, and overlap. I had a little mark in that one, so I think it would look best just like that. Now take your time for a moment or two and just be sure that the glue is all grabbed because there's nothing else to hold that setting up like that and that just gives it that lovely little saucer shape. So now I've got a five centimetre circle. So this is four centimetres and then it has come in slightly there with the little bow on it. So this one is five and I'm just going to make a series of little snips all around the outside of this just about um, half a centimetre in, roughly. I'm just going to bend these very, very slightly the whole way around and then glue this right onto the back of this little aperture here just to give it a little bit of shape so that it actually holds on to that. And now I've got three little four centimetre circles which I'm just going to glue together and glue onto the base of that and that will hold that up like a well, I'm going to say like a proper little saucer. Now, 
I was actually going to put a little brad through there and I've marked a little hole in it but I think I'll actually just glue the cup to the saucer and in fact you could leave it the way it is but I think I'll glue it so I'm going to put this little piece where the saucer is joined to the back and then this little handle will go sort of that way so this point will face this this join here and that way the little uh, cup will fit into the box with the handle sitting nicely too so there we are and just lift it and check that it's centered So I have put glitter card on the base of this and in at the back there as you can see as well and also on both sides and I could have put it on the back but I'm going to write my details on that because I've got to send this over to Tonic so uh, just as much decoration as you like on that and then I took the little piece that I used for here and popped it on the bottom there as well. Now obviously that would make a really lovely little box for something, uh, anything actually, something even that fits up sort of tall up into that lid. But uh, I just thought saying I had the little cup and saucer that that would look really nice in there. And you could put something really, really beautiful inside and something very, very beautiful inside that little cup and saucer as well. So I hope you like that. That's just another little idea for using your die set. It's actually hard to show this because uh, just the way I'm holding it, I think I just need to take a better photograph of it because when I hold it like this, then it falls off. Right, that's my samples for this video finished. So you'll be able to see lots of photos at the end of this one and the little box and the teacup and saucer that I made there. But in my next video, because I've actually been away in between the last two clips there and I've made this one, which is extremely difficult to show from this angle, but I will add photos of it at the end as well. So this is actually another little um, carousel, is that what you call it? But the, the little baskets or the little cups actually swing on it this time. So uh, you will see that video as well after this one. The link for that will be down below in the description of this one. So I'm also going to be making a card with that, although I just haven't finished it yet. But I really, really hope that you've enjoyed that as much as I have. I absolutely love what I made. I just love the way that die set worked out in the end. And I hope that you have had fun with it too and that you'll enjoy it if you do buy it. If you do feel like buying it, don't forget that you can use my affiliate links. They're down below in the description and I get a little commission from that, but it doesn't cost you anything extra as well. So I always appreciate everybody who uses those. Please let me know what you think of this. Please let me know what you think of the video and do give me a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And uh, that's all I have to say at the moment, but do follow on after this and have a little look over at the other video because I think you're going to like the way that one turned out as well. It's just different from these little twirling teacups, as you can see these ones move around here. Oh, thank you so, so much for staying with me all of this time. And I hope to see you again soon. But in the meantime, happy crafting. Bye bye.